Welcome back to This Week in Texas. Earlier in the program, you heard briefly from Jeremy Major, a senior policy advisor with the nonprofit public think tank Texas 2036, headquartered in Austin. We spoke with him at length about the ongoing threat of a water crisis here in Texas and how Texans can respond to keep clean water accessible across the Lone Star State. Is Texas in the middle of a water crisis? I think Texas is in a water crisis for several reasons. One, we have to recognize that we live in, in a drought prone state. Uh, as of right now, even though we've had some beneficial rainfall, when you look at the U.S. drought monitor, we can see that over half the state is in drought at a time when this is we should be getting a lot of beneficial rainfall. Uh, last year was a significant drought year, but also when we look at our recent history, we have suffered from some very severe, significant drought events, most notably in 2021. Uh, but even when we look back in time, we know that Texas has been hit by long lasting severe droughts, such as the drought of the 1950s and even the centuries before then. And so we know we're a drought prone state. The issue is, do we have enough water supplies for a growing state that's prone to being afflicted by drought? And the answer is, is that we're working on it, which is good news. We just need to work on it more in terms of expanding our water supply portfolio to include more reservoirs, more water reuse and desalination. An interesting comment yesterday was, I think it was a state legislator who said, you know, we have all these people coming into Texas, but none of them bring water with them. Yes, that's true. I mean, we have significant, it's, we, we face a, 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 an interesting challenge as part of our water crisis. The first part of that challenge is you know, the number of thirsty Texans in our state, it's going to go up. Our state population is going to grow. At the same time, the, our available water supplies is actually going to diminish. Our groundwater pumping and the sedimentation of our lakes and reservoirs is actually going to shrink the amount of water that we have available for a growing thirsty state. Why? It's just uh, why, why the... Uh, why is it shrinking? Well, it shrink, our groundwater supplies are, are shrinking for, for two reasons. One, you have a lot of groundwater withdrawals where people are, are pumping more water up from underground than either recharges, than, than, than what recharges into that aquifer, and that leads to aquifer depletion. Another reason is when we look at our surface water resources, our rivers, lakes, and reservoirs, there's a phenomenon called sedimentation where runoff into those rivers and lakes, you know, has a lot of dirt and silt in it. And that contributes to buildup in layers at the bottom of those lakes and reservoirs, ultimately shrinking their storage capacity over time. Making them more shallow. Yeah, exactly, making it more shallow. All right, and some people we talked to yesterday agree with you that there is a crisis. Some say, no, we're not in a crisis. Define crisis. Well, there's, there's two elements to this crisis. The first is always being under the threat of a severe drought that can last ver a very long period of time. And we, we know that Texas has, has endured these events before, much like the significant and historic drought of the 1950s. And you know, the, the crisis is just knowing we have to build more water supplies given the ever-present threat of drought. But there's another element to the crisis too, Tom, and that is of our aging, deteriorating water and wastewater infrastructure. Last year, we saw some major headlines in, in state newspapers about catastrophic water system failures across the state. We saw a, a, an aging, deteriorated water trunk line break in Odessa in June, leaving the people in the West Texas heat without water for 48 hours. In Laredo, there was a 13-day-long a, a boil water notice that severe, really severely affected the quality of life in that community. On top of that, there was a boil water notice in Houston. We saw other headlines of small and even medium-sized cities either having boil water notices or no water due to the condition of their aging, deteriorating water and wastewater system. And then there was the famous example that we saw east of the Mississippi in Jackson, Mississippi, where a, a, an avalanche of issues came, came to term, where an extreme weather event combined with underinvestment in that water system and neglect and age and disrepair 
had left that major city in the middle of Mississippi without, without water. And we've been asking the question here at Texas 2036 of can what happened in Jackson, Mississippi happen here in Texas? And we think that when we look at the data about our water systems, we think there's a high probability we could have a Jackson-like event here in Texas. Anywhere in the state? It, it could be anywhere. I mean, you have to remember we have over 10,000 public water and wastewater systems across the state. Those are a lot of systems. Uh, I couldn't tell you which city is going to have this type of catastrophic failure, but just given the sheer number of systems we have in the state and the, the known age and the known problems that we have with our water and wastewater systems, the, it, it could be probable that we could have something like that happen. Now, I understand that, that there, there is some legislation which is poised to address some of this infrastructure issue. I think there's the idea of putting $3 billion into it, but that's not enough, is it? When we look at the cost estimates prepared by the Water Development Board and the US EPA on what it costs to uh, you know, build more water supplies or to rehabilitate our, our aging and deteriorating water and wastewater systems, we know that the true cost goes well above three to five billion dollars. Some estimates go as high as 60 to 70 billion dollars over the next 20 years. And water infrastructure is not cheap. It's capital intensive. You have to buy a lot of concrete, a lot of steel. Sometimes you have to procure land, which is also expensive. Not to mention the, the legal and engineering services that go into uh, oper to, to building a water supply project. And then on top of that, you have to find qualified people to manage and operate a, a water project. And you know, one of the things we we're also worried about is the absence of a qualified water workforce. Uh, so going back to the original question of the cost, water, water supply and water infrastructure projects have always been very capital intensive. And 50 years ago, the federal government footed much of that bill. But over the subsequent decades, the, the federal contribution to our state's water and wastewater infrastructure has declined. And while recent measures by Congress have tried to course correct this decline in federal spending, we're still seeing a significant amount of financial assistance is needed to bring our water systems up to snuff. So I know a, a lot of legislators will say that infrastructure is a priority. The governor mentioned it in his inaugural address, and he specifically mentioned water, both this time and during his first inauguration, uh, as water being an issue. Do you think there's enough attention when we talk about infrastructure? People are focused on the grid, uh, people are focused on, on other elements of energy. Do they think enough, or, or roads even, do they think enough about water? I think water is always on the minds of, of, of state legislators, you know, in the legislature and in state leadership offices, and, and for good reason. Uh, we've, we, we've all felt the pinch of severe drought. I mean, last year alone, we saw over $2 billion in economic losses in our agricultural sector. Uh, at the same time as the 2022 drought raged, there were communities on the, the Texas uh, border in the Rio Grande Valley that were perilously close to running out of water because their reservoir was about to run dry. So, I, and, then, and then we had the stories in Laredo and, and Odessa and, and Houston. So water is always an issue that comes up again and again and again. And we've done polling with Texas voters about what they think about water. We asked voters two questions at our Texas voter poll last summer about what they think the state should invest in when it comes to our water. The first question we asked, like, you know, given the ongoing drought, do you think the state should invest some of this budget surplus on new water supplies, like new reservoirs or desalination facilities? 82% of Texans agree that spending more money on water supplies is a wise investment. Some final thoughts when This Week in Texas returns. 